Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Mary Christensen, the Director of Product Marketing here at Billing Platform, and we're thrilled to have you with us as we dig into some of the modern billing models for enterprises and the best practices for adding subscriptions. With me today is Brian Dingman, our Vice President of Solution Engineering. Brian has over 15 years of experience in selling, architecting, and delivering cloud-based technologies, specifically around subscription and usage-based products. Prior to joining Billing Platform, he held solution engineering roles at Aptis and Salesforce and is three times Salesforce certified. Thanks for being with us today, Brian. Thank you. Before I turn it over to Brian, I want to spend just a few minutes on why this topic is so timely. Subscriptions are all around us. And according to the analyst firm Gartner, by 2024, subscriptions will contribute to 20% of the revenue growth for digital commerce organizations. And another analyst firm, Ventana Research agrees. They're predicting that by 2025, over 20% of organizations will have a part of their business conducted via subscriptions and recurring revenue rather than simple one-time sales as companies adjust business models to remain competitive. Companies moving to these more sophisticated business models are able to extract more revenue as this chart shows. On the left side, you can see that the revenue generated from a one-time sales model this could be the purchase of a piece of equipment where there's a large outlay due when the product is purchased, along with the support or maintenance fee due monthly or annually. Compare that with the recurring subscription model shown on the right side. Here you have a subscription fee plus the usage of the product. So back to the example of the purchase of equipment, imagine it's an MRI imaging machine. Rather than paying that large price tag up front, companies can pay a flat fee annually plus a fee based on the number of images produced. This shows that the subscription model presents new opportunities for businesses to enhance the value of their offerings while becoming more embedded in their customer's journey. And not only do customers benefit from subscription models, when a usage, model is, when a, uh, usage component is added, they're able to pay for only what they use, but businesses are also benefiting by generating more revenue. As this chart shows, usage-based public companies are outperforming their traditional subscription peers. As of March 2022, usage-based public companies saw year-over-year -year growth of 34% versus 23%. This is driven by significant retention rates of 125% versus 115%. And they did this at an even greater revenue scale with similar gross margin and rule of 40 profiles to their peers. As a result, the usage-based businesses are valued at a substantial premium, despite continued volatility in public markets. And for those of you that may be wondering what the rule of 40 is, as I was, it's a common metric used by uh, private equity investors and strategic buyers to measure the performance of SaaS companies and contends that a successful SaaS company's growth rate and profit margin should up, add up to more than 40%. So what does that all mean for your business? At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who's going to share a few examples of the types of subscription models for you to consider, along with some best practices for supporting these new business models. Brian, over to you. Thank you. So we talk about successful pricing models. Uh, it really begins with the subscription. Um, you have your, we'll call it a flat rate subscription, and uh, you really build on it from there. So you can add a subscription with usage and we'll call it a subscription with an overage component. That's much like your, your cell phone plan. Um, maybe not so much today, but back in the day where you had included minutes, included text, included SMS, um, things, things like that. Uh, and then you can move into a straight consumption model. So something like your utility bill, for example, is a straight consumption model. Um, then you can move into something more along the lines of hybrid, for example, and that can include uh, one-time fees for things like setup, et cetera, combined with uh, consumption-based products, as well as combined with subscriptions. Uh, and then as part of that, you can start layering in other, what I'll call pricing mechanisms, um, things like uh, tiered rates. So that's your, your volume pricing. So the more you use, the lower uh, the price goes. Uh, things like uh, freemium, for example, very, very popular today where you start with a service, there's no cost to it, and you can then 
um, subscribe or you get 30 months free. So think of like in the consumer space, you have like Apple Music, um, you get maybe a month free and then it converts into a paying subscription. But in the enterprise world, we see this uh, more and more with even business applications. Um, companies like Pipetrack, for example, will give you seven or 14 days uh, of, of free experience of their solution um, and not even require payment. Um, they're so confident that you're going to um, you know, like their product that they'll want you to buy it. And then there's other things like high watermark billing, uh, average, uh, things like that uh, per user, per active user. So there's a bunch of different kind of variety of components around uh, pricing models, but they all build upon the, the recurring revenue model of the subscription. In terms of, uh, you know, first one we'll talk about is, is uh, one of the more simple ways for companies to sell solutions uh, is through a flat rate subscription in which customers pay a recurring fixed price at regular intervals for access to a product or service. Uh, this type of model has been used for many years. Um, you've probably seen it with magazines, newspapers, cable TV, for example, in the past. Um, with this model, there's no relationship between pricing and the amount of the product or service you use. And payments are typically rendered on a recurring monthly or annual basis. In this example, we're, we're talking about Pluralsight. Um, they do online training and uh, they offer their complete library of online development courses for monthly or annual subscriptions, allowing uh, folks to gain skills on the timeline that suits their current business needs. Uh, one of the real advantages of this flat rate pricing model is that they are very easy for customers to understand. Um, you know, companies don't have to worry too much that their pricing will confuse uh, consumers. Um, but, you know, conversely, on the downside, flat rate pricing can turn away customers who may not like the specific terms and limited flexibility. For example, I only need to use one course. I'm only interested in two courses. You know, why do I have to pay $299 or $35 monthly? Um, and so that's one of the downsides. If we look at uh, usage-based pricing, um, this is um, really, it, it talks about the amount that customers pay to use a product or service and it scales with the actual utilization. So unlike in that last example with Pluralsight, if I just wanted to have like two courses, then um, you know, I'm paying for all of them, I'm paying for the entire catalog and I'm paying for it monthly. Um, with usage-based pricing, we're just, you, you're just charging for actual usage of those two courses, for example. Um, in this case, we have AWS pricing up here. Um, usage pricing is also known as pay-as-you-go or consumption-based pricing. Um, and it can be adapted to a variety of price models. Like I said, AWS is on the screen here. Uh, in this example, you can see customers are, are charged based on the capacity used by hour. Uh, AWS has, a, has just a massive product catalog and they, they charge in every which way um, in, in addition to uh, included uh, free tiers. So I think, you know, first 50 gigs is free here in this case, but they also have um, other products where you have a, a combination of, you know, volume-based pricing and, um, then we talked about tiers. We talked about, um, you know, being able to kind of dip your toe in before you go all in. And this is something, you know, Twilio has taken on as well. They're another big proponent of usage-based models. And it, uh, it allows you to, you know, address the large enterprise as well as the, um, you know, the small kind of maybe startups. Um, the other thing, and, and it's kind of moving off from AWS, uh, moving into kind of the, the Twilio, or sorry, I'm sorry um, moving off from kind of AWS kind of pay as you go. They've also adopted um, something along the lines of a reservation model as well. So one of the downsides to usage-based pricing is you have a lack of predictability. So um, an example that, that, that was pretty prevalent um, is when the pandemic first started and everybody kind of shipped online, um, there was a big spike in, in, uh, in you know, AWS usage, for example, with uh, e-commerce. And you know, companies' budgets went out, went, you know, went way out of out of whack. So one of the things they've introduced is a, is a kind of a reservation model to give you that predictable layer, um, but still at its core, you know, giving usage as, as kind of its core rating method. Uh, with pricing tiers, uh, customers um, can pick from several predefined, you know, product packages at various price points. Um, in this case, we're looking at uh, Zendesk, and Zendesk actually splits it kind of two ways. It's kind of the every, every man way, and then um, you know the enterprise way. So it's kind of like they don't really classify. It's basically enterprise and not enterprise. And then in the not enterprise world, they have these different pricing tiers. Um, 
The main benefit, obviously, is that uh, companies can attract various types of buyers with pricing tiers because it offers more options and value at different price points. Uh, it's very common to see pricing tiers include usage-based features or add-ons within these you know, particular packages or tiers. And then oftentimes, you know, one tier will include fewer of an add-on to entice customers to upgrade. This makes it very easy to upsell customers and upgrade their services once they have outgrown their initial package. Um, this is a this is a really uh, it's uh, it's kind of brilliant on how some of these customers have done this, uh, but they'll have you know a certain product where the the kind of component of usage you know ends and to get to the next one it makes more sense to uh, to pay out uh, per se than than to actually go into a pay as you go model for any for any kind of overage so. Uh, they're very quite clever with some of these uh, pricing tiers out there. Um, the next type is, I wanted to talk to on briefly is hybrid pricing. And hybrid pricing models are a mix and match of the pricing uh, you know, tactics that, that we've seen on the previous uh, slides. Uh, many, uh, many providers combine flat rate recurring with usage-based uh, pricing to create attractive product packages for different types of users. Uh, billing for these packages uses subscriptions as the foundation then adds on users, adds on usage, adds on features in increasingly sophisticated ways. Um, what really kind of, I think, you know, di differentiates like subscription with overage and kind of, and those kind of models we talked about uh, earlier was, was really the, the flat rate charges. Um, so one-time fees. So these, these are usually um, included in hybrid pricing as well. So things like setup costs or professional services um, those are those are very common. So you see a, a real real range of, of gamut of services in here. So we talk about um, these pricing models. You know, how does a company looking to grow into usage based recurring revenue? How do they actually get there? How do how, you know how, how does this work? Um, you know, the key really is is having a, a you know a billing solution. Um, that knows how to process and rate usage, right? If if you're if you're going to market with consumption-based pricing model, you necessarily need a billing solution that can handle the consumption data. Um, that consumption data or usage data, there's tons of different terms for it, um, comes from operational systems, largely websites, and and you know could be data warehouses, data lakes, etc. And um, you know the billing system needs to be able to talk to that data. And not only talk to it, but it needs to be able to mediate and and uh, and rate the data. So when we talk about you know mediation and rating, well, mediation is just the process of loading the data, um, to taking the usage data and loading it into the system, and then doing things like transformations to it. Or um, there's other pieces that can that can take place in mediation, uh, as, as far as like date format, things like that. So it's it's a little bit of a transformation layer. It's largely loading data and then rating or pricing um, is also part of, of that process. And so um, mediation is very, very closely tied into rating. Um, and, and why is that? Um, so just as an example, right, for each usage event, uh, we need to find out who that usage event belongs to, uh, what products were used, what products they used in that, in that line of usage, for example, that usage event, that usage line, you know, how much of the quantity of the service was used, or does the existence of that record just represent a quantity of one? Um, and then when was the service used? So what was the date? Um, and that could be uh, something that needs to be calculated. It could be you know, a start time and an end time. So we actually have to calculate the number of minutes that were, that were taking place and that becomes the quantity. And that's another piece of mediation um, that, that, that is very common is looking at the data and then, and then figuring out the billable elements to it. But the end result is that, you know, it's a fully integrated and fully automated solution uh, for usage-based charging models. And so, you know, when we talk about this billing system, it also needs to be able to uh, automate the recurring revenue life cycle, right? This isn't just a point in time. Uh, it's, it's this entire life cycle that goes around and around um, in, in, in a cyclical manner. And, and um, you know, when I, when I talk to, companies and, and businesses, um, so many of them talk to manual processes that are that are part of their order to cash processes. Um, it, you know, I hear Excel spreadsheets, I hear um, just all sorts of kind of, you know, 
figuring things out manually, loading their GL with journal entries and doing all these manual tasks. And so, you know, the key is automating. Um, one of the examples I heard I heard recently was a, was a customer who is looking at, um, you know, pricing models that involve prepaid usage. And they have a customer, uh, an end customer of theirs, who's going to be buying a prepaid amount of a service. So, so think of the AWS example, you're going to be being, you're going to buy, you know, 50 gigs of storage, um, S3 storage or some, some, some type of data storage. And then once you, once you go through that 50 gigs, you know, do you just convert to a pay as you go model or do you, you know, move them into the bronze tier? And, and so these are the, the type of, you know, gating activities that take place. And, um, you know, the, the, the feedback um, from, from this one, you know, business was they wanted to have uh, their sales team reach out to the customer when they came close to this threshold or reaching this thre the threshold. And, and um, you know, I, that, that's definitely one way to do it. But I think the, the, the better way personally is to automate this. So an example would be to burst them into a higher package automatically. So you would credit the original package and then basically rebuild them for the, the new package. Um, you could also move them to a pay-as-you-go model. So there's a number of different ways, but the key is, you know, let's automate all of this. Um, it don't involve human assisted changes. Um, it, it just it, it brings about more friction in the process and 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 largely you know uh, more opportunity for error to be honest. Um, but the, the key is is automating all of this. So those things I talked about were you know essentially contract modifications. And so this is this is really the the last piece to talk about is um, how do you handle these changes? Right, that recurring revenue life cycle is just full of change, upgrades, downgrades, uh, you know, in the case of the, the prepaid, uh, you know, bundle, you know, bursting them into a, a higher tier, for example, and then issuing a credit and then rebilling for the, the service. That that all, that all requires um, specific revenue recognition treatment according to ASC 606 and IFRS 15. So whether the modification is uh, perspective or retrospective, you know, you really need a solution that can automate the entirety of the recurring revenue life cycle. Uh, often when I talk to businesses with hybrid pricing models, you know, revenue management uh, is almost always a manual process. Um, and that's just, you know, it's just the result of, of the systems not communicating, you know, the ERP and the, and whatever they're using for billing and billing is largely manual. Um, if they're using an ERP for billing. And so, this is, you know, one of the one of the ways, especially with the new the new standards and the accounting standards, um, you know, people have gotten there through <laughs> manual means. Um, and so I'm here to say it, it doesn't have to be that way. This can this can be fully automated. Mary, I'll turn turn it over to you. Great, thanks, Brian. That was really helpful um, to hear about the different billing models that enterprises can add to their bag of tricks, um, and really helpful to understand those key capabilities to make sure that they do it right. Um, but to bring it all together, I want to spend just another minute building on those capabilities Brian mentioned and talk about the value that a single solution offers when thinking about changing up the way you sell your products and services. Really, to do this successfully, it's important to optimize the entire revenue management process so you can accurately monetize your new business models. That includes being able to set up your products and pricing in a product catalog that'll be available for your sales team as they configure quotes for customers. The ability to track and process usage of those products that Brian mentioned. The ability to automatically generate billing and invoices for products sold. To collect payments. And the ability to manage delinquent accounts, as well as provide full account management. And then track that billing detail all the way through, accurately recognizing revenue on the general ledger. The flexibility that a single solution offers is a way for enterprises to control how they differentiate in the market maximize profitability, reduce operational costs, and improve the customer experience. So with that, we've only scratched the surface on the benefits of adding subscription and usage-based models to your businesses. But if you're interested in learning more, please contact us for a free consulting session at contact at billingplatform.com. Um, and if you have any questions, we welcome, we welcome those and we'd love to hear from you. You can either reach out to Brian or myself and we'll get back to you. With that, thank you for joining us today. And if you um, uh, have any other questions, let us know. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in a future session. Thank you.